Hey, what's up, it's Ikemel. Welcome to the channel. And I have an update with regards to Maricela Botello. Uh, somebody sent me a picture from the group on Facebook. Uh, actually, yesterday they were talking about it on Facebook. And uh, today, I believe, or 10 hours ago, they posted a picture of the arrest record of the other person. So there's two people in custody and uh, one other person, Charles Beltran, still missing. And so we're going to take a look at some pictures. I'm going to show you the arrest record. And uh, this is good so far. This is a step in the right direction to trying to get some justice uh, with this whole ridiculous, crazy, insane situation, which it's still very mysterious. I'm wondering the connection between these three people. So this is Nina Morano. She was arrested on uh, Friday, I believe, in Miami Dade, uh, 49 years old. That's her mugshot right there. And she was arrested in connection for the murder of uh, 23 year old Maricela Botello. She's the woman that traveled from Seattle to Texas, Deep Ellum. And uh, I believe the last time she was seen was October 4th. So now this guy here, Ch Charles Beltran, they're still looking for him. He's been posting on Instagram. He hasn't posted, I think, in a couple of days, but he's been on there. And I think he's been trying to throw people off by tagging locations that he may not really be at. Uh, but so far, all the people that have been caught have been in Florida. And this is a story where they were in Texas. Their residence, their place of residence was in Texas. And once they started being looked into and Maricela disappeared, they left their places of residence. I think the arrest warrant said that they quit their jobs. And so this is Charles Beltran. Uh, and if you didn't see the live stream from the other night, definitely check it out because we went over all the details, the arrest warrants and all that stuff. And so the person that that got arrested now is Lisa Dykes. Okay. This was 327. So that was yesterday at 1247 AM time booked uh, charges. And it's the um, capital murder. Now, the interesting thing here, and this is what I noticed they said in the group, and it's true, she dyed her hair. That's one thing you can observe right there. Uh, now, if you see these pictures here from her Facebook, her hair, from what I see, is usually like this whitish type of hair, like her white hair or bleached or whatever. And so and there, there's that picture, too, that I shared on Facebook. This is what her hair and a lot of the stuff the pictures that I've seen looks like. And uh, Flossie told me that the hair, the, the way her hair looked here, looked like it was recently done, like recently dyed. So I don't know how long she's had this like that. The other thing too, with her pictures on Facebook, I mean, looking at this one here, it's like you see it almost like the other side of her. You know, a lot of times on Facebook, people post their pictures. They're posting you what they want you to see. They're posting the one side of them, the, the, the surface level of a person, right? And then over here, it's like you see almost like evil. So look at the look on her face. Like maybe she's pissed off, evil, angry, wasn't expecting to get caught. She looks a little bigger too. I mean, just look at the look in her eyes. It looks like a... Like, you could just see, like, there's evil in there. Last known location, Mesquite. That was the place of residence. And so now the last person that we need in custody is Charles Beltran. That's who they're looking for. Now, some of the interesting things, too, is just the age difference, right? You got Charles, that's 31. You have Nina... Uh, Morano, that's 49, and Lisa, that's 57. Now, I think, I believe Lisa was born in Kentucky. Uh, Nina was born in Pennsylvania, if this information is correct. It could be wrong. The Social Security number issued location for Nina, Pennsylvania. For Lisa, was Kentucky. For Charles, I have here. For Charles, I have Texas. And so with Nina, there's multiple previous addresses uh from different states like uh you know we have pennsylvania there's one also from miami but that was january 31st 2021 um previous miami addresses new york utah 
Salt Lake City, Orlando, uh, they're just different bunch of places, even New York, New York, New York. Um, and then with uh, Lisa, the last one we have is Texas, the Mesquite address, the 3113 address that we spoke about previously. Uh, and she also has another Texas one, Orlando, uh, other locations in Florida, Claremont, uh, Ohio also, and Kentucky, of course. It's literally a rabbit hole. I mean, I've been racking my head going through the different names. This seems just very, I don't even know the word to describe. I mean, it's definitely a rabbit hole. There's a bunch of businesses involved, multiple states between Nina and Lisa. And then you start seeing some of the webs with other people, which I'm not going to put those people's names or anything like that in this video because I don't know. You know, I could be interpreting things wrong. I don't know what's what. You know, um, I'm sure police for now are mentioning these three people for a reason. But it's just weird, some of the business stuff. And so let me just go down some of the pieces like Nina 49. OK, Nina, she is a lawyer and she had a business. Uh, she had a pizzeria that she owned. Uh, she is an active lawyer and her education is uh, BYU Law School, Columbia University in the city of New York. And we also have her uh, LinkedIn here, which has some pieces, but it's the same thing that I just got on this other website. Lexington, Virginia, uh, United States, law student, uh, law clerk for five months at this place, Columbia University in the city of New York, just like we saw in BYU Law School. And so here, if you look up for New York, it is active. Nina Tam Tamar Marano, if that's how you say it, uh, it's attorney currently registered. Okay, next registration, July 2021. You see here, it says New York City Housing Authority. The New York City Housing Authority is a New York State Public Development Corporation, which provides public housing in New York City. It was the first agency in the United States to provide housing for low and moderate income residents throughout the five boroughs of New York City. I think Nina may at one point have probably interned at that place or worked for a short period of time. I'm not exactly sure, but that's the address that that license has for New York, according to that website. Now, the next two uh links that we're going to watch these two bits of um information uh, i got it from web sleuth thank you to tessanita i think her name was and this is like a professional profile that nina has here and it has the davenport florida address which remember that for later and even now because this is the empire law group that's uh in uh davenport and that's listed as her business we're going to take a look at that a little bit later because it has it's a little bit interesting with nina and Lisa, and we know they both have legal backgrounds. Um, the other thing too is the Florida state status member in good standing. It was acquired in two, 2012 and updated 3 1 2021. And the New York uh, status is currently registered, which is what we just saw. Uh, acquired in 2011 and updated to 28 2021 this website also under contact has the extensive. It's pretty much her resume has all of her work experience here listed. I don't know if this is exactly everything, but student attorney in 2009, community legal practice center at Washington and Lee University School of Law, uh, law clerk at the Bennett Law Firm, uh, associate at Bogan Munns and Munns and attorney in some of these places. We're gonna be looking at this one here, Nina T. Morano Esquire. This is the one for the Florida thing. Um, and these are just, some of the positions, uh, J. Clark Law Society, attorney member, it's present, Columbia University Alumni Association, present, uh, the different schools that she's gone to. We saw this one, we saw the Virgin, Virgin, Virgin <laughs> Virginia School of Law, Washington and Lee University School of Law, and uh, Columbia University Bachelor of Arts. And she did some speaking engagement, which um, would be interesting to see or some sort of conference or something. I don't know. I tried looking, but I couldn't really find anything. And then also the web sleuths don't play. They already left the review for her. So this site also came up on the web sleuth. So I think Flossie sent me this as well. Um, and apparently I'm not sure if this is her. It seems like it's her. Nina Tamar Morano read or wrote a children's book. Book has been delisted since but she wrote a children's book. Now, wait till you hear about this description, which tells her school and some of her background. And I found some other links about her background. And the reason we're talking about this is because there's just, if you look into some of these people behind them, 
the their background, the, the business stuff, the the addresses, the there's a lot of weird stuff, I think. And then also how do these people tie in with Charles Beltran? And it seems like these people have have multiple name aliases. Yeah, it's just <laughs> I don't even know. So all right, Nina Tamarano earned her Bachelor of Arts in French, cum laude from U Columbia University. Miss Morano went on to learn her Juris Doctor from the J. Reuben Clark School of Law. While earning her law degree, Miss Morano attended Washington and Lee University for a semester as a visiting scholar where she served as a student attorney representing low income clients. During her final year of law school, Ms. Morano attended a prestigious University of Virginia Law School as a visiting scholar. Ms. Morano is currently a practicing attorney admitted to the New York and Florida bars. As a child, Nina Tamar Morano went on many exciting, fantastic, magical adventures by stepping into the realm of imagination and knowledge that she discovered in books. Nina flew across the sky with talking animals, discovered vast hidden treasures, danced with fairies, spoke languages long forgotten, learned about love, loss, and longing only heard in songs of the heart, spent time among ancient gods and giants, and explored countless worlds. Nina enjoys sharing her love of literature and storytelling. Clippity Clippity Floppis, Nina Tamar Morano's first published children's book, and was originally written as a birthday present for a wonderful young lady and friend. Now, with uh, this website, when you type in Nina T. Morano Esquire, all the stuff of her businesses, addresses, and some of her employment history pop up. And I'm not going to read the entire thing because we've already gone through some of this, but it states here she opened her first business at 15 years of age. Uh, it also states here that while at Columbia University, Miss Morano co founded La Terre. Uh, French performance trope, if that's how you say it, a student organization that boasted members of both Barnard College and Columbia University. And here's some of the things that she does. Ms. Morano began her legal career as a solo practitioner with a general practice that included immigration, real property transactions, landlord tenant matters, and civil and criminal litigation, SSDI, and bankruptcy. Ms. Morano currently practices in the areas of complex lease, buyback transactions, real estate, and corporate law, which we're going to take a look at the real estate briefly. This is her current business, uh, Law Offices of Nina T. Morano Esquire, New York slash Orlando, which um, Lisa was arrested in the Orlando area. Nina was arrested in Miami. And here at the bottom too, which I, I did verify, she did do some notary services, public services. These are the licenses that I could see anyway. Uh, this address is an old address. They no longer, or she no longer owns that address, even though it's still listed. Uh, and so she did real estate too, for a certain time, the license expired. I guess she got it in Pennsylvania expired May 31st, 2020. And you can see here also that, um, another website that I found, but it says, uh, Nina, a real estate agent currently in Pennsylvania. Currently Nina is working with Nina Timorano Esquire same person. That's the license number. And so that's it. So she did some real estate and then she has the two licenses for, um, for, for being an attorney. Now to look a little bit at the business aspect, and this is still Nina, but this is where Lisa, from what I can see ties in as well. Uh, this is, uh, Nina's original LLC, Nina's original NY pizzeria and which it's actually called uh, and juice or something. We'll get to that. Both of these addresses, there's no pizzeria there anymore. It's just like a complex, a general uh, area. So I believe the place was shut down. I'll tell you why. Uh, but this is Nina's original LLC. This is also Empire Law Group PA. Okay, this is the Davenport address, mailing address. Um, this is all public under the business listings for all these, uh, for Nina. It's all public. This is what they use for their business address. Um, and so here's where it's kind of interesting. Business contact Lisa Dykes registered agent, Lisa Dykes on her profile, which she has a bunch of aliases. She's a, a paralegal. And I'm not exactly sure that this listing here is all the listings for the jobs uh, that she's had. You have to go really look into the internet to find this stuff. It's not just on one website, but 
she had she got her education assistant paralegal from Kentucky, which is where she was born. Uh, legal assistant slash paralegal. So then it looks like maybe they even work together. I guess. I guess it would make sense if um, Nina has her own business. She's a lawyer, and you could use a paralegal. And the other business contact is Nina. She actually has a home in Pennsylvania that she owns herself. And so that's another thing that kind of telling that she was, it seems like she was on the run, obviously, you know I mean? They're coming after her. Uh, and then this is the actual full name, Nina's original New York pizzeria and juice bar corporation address. I checked the address already filing date, May 16, 2007 expired securities and exchange commission status expired. Uh, and it says here, file date, June 17, 2010, status reason canceled. Now, Lisa doesn't have anything on this, any listings on this for the pizzeria, but it's just this whole uh, lawyer business, attorney business, paralegal thing that I saw her name, both of their names linked together. Nina's original LLC corporation, 2007, uh, expired as well, and status reason voluntarily dissolved, okay? And Nina's original LLC primary and uh, this one expired as well. Failure to file renewal. Nina's LLC also had another guy on there, William. I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know if they were married at some point. I don't know anybody's relationship at this point or what these people are doing. But I did find this uh, website too for the Nina's original NY Pizzeria where it says, sorry, the restaurant has closed. So just all those indications and this, you can tell, this is really just kind of trivial, but just to kind of show all the little different or some of the different business aspects behind some of this stuff. I believe this is the final one that I found anyway listed when global enterprises, though I never found any business as that other site stated that when she started when she was 15, I don't know about that. But uh, so this is the corporation here and it has Nina's name and uh, William. This place is no longer. Um, it was a voluntary dissolution. I'm not sure what's the point of all this stuff, but voluntary dissolution 2013. Those are the addresses, same place. So we're going to get a little bit into Lisa. Let me just say while making this and looking and trying to research, it feels like just going in circles. And so I don't want to put out a bunch of, I was going to continue putting out more stuff, but I was like, let me just, you know, whatever I can confirm or what seems kind of sen makes sense or logical. We'll put that in the video because the way I see it is that maybe somebody else will see the information and maybe somebody else can put other pieces together. And so with Nina, just this whole thing, the, the one thing we can find that ties these two people together, at least uh, is them, it seems them working together and them being listed under the same business together. The last, uh, the last business that's in Davenport, uh, and Nina is an attorney. Lisa is a paralegal and there's just a bunch of different names, aliases. There's just more to me. that doesn't make so much sense. You got Lisa Joe Dykes, 57 years old, if that's her age, I don't know. And you got these aliases here, Lisa Ahmed, which is where her Facebook's under, Elizabeth Keith, Lisa Williams, Lisa Keith, Elizabeth Williams. And then I found an email address under one of these Lisa, Lisa Dykes. I found an email address, Elizabeth Beltran, Beltran, Charles Beltran, the Beltran name, the multiple aliases, the circle jerk, this whole thing has been possible owner, Lisa Joe Dykes. And then just look at, look at all these damn Ahmed, Keith Dykes, Lisa W. Ahmed, Lisa D. Williams, Lisa D. Keith, Lisa K. Williams, Elizabeth. It goes on and on and on. Now with Lisa, as far as businesses, which I only have one for now, who knows with all the different aliases, maybe there's something else, but we have this Noah Consulting LLC, which is under this Texas address, okay? It's forfeited its existence. The business contact listed here for Noah LLC, Noah Consulting is Lisa Dykes. And the business contact is somebody from the Williams family. The address that they were using at that time, it seems it's like that 274 address. Under the Noah Consulting LLC, uh, it shows here that he was listed, the Williams guy, as a agent. 
uh, and the mailing address for this place was the 3113 Kingston Drive, where, of course, murders happen. I'm not saying that these people have anything to do with it. I'm just saying it's interesting, the different business ties and the names that come together, and it can look like different people, but it seems like they're all related somehow through maybe all the different marriages. The 274 address, it looked like at one point... I believe this place was being rented. It's a home, but it's being rented out, I believe. So at one point, one of the Williams used to stay there, and uh, Dykes was there too, and there was another Dykes family member that might have been a possible previous resident. And so what it appears to be, from just my opinion outside looking in, is that she's been married multiple times, various times, I'm assuming, and does business with these different family members. That's why you see Keith Williams popping up uh, and some of the other names. And those people are attached to uh, the home, the 3113, the Noah consultation, which the, the 374, I think the, one of the Keiths used to live there. And then uh, there, it's also tied because one of the Keiths owns the Davenport address, which is the address that Nina was operating her business out of. Lisa, I believe, got the name Ahmed from recently getting married, I believe, in 2020, if that's even right. And as you can see, listed on family members on her Facebook page, there's Williams and a mix of Keith. And so there's different, you know, family things going on there. Another little tidbit uh, while looking at Lisa's profile, she has some work experience listed here. Flossie sent it to me. Uh, and so it says here, one of the things that I can see that match is the Bogan Munns and Munns PA. And on Nina's work experience here, she did the Bogan Munns and Munns PA. It says here between 2013 and 2014. And Lisa was, according to this, started 2006 and left 2014. So they might, might have known each other back then, probably even longer than that. You know, who knows? The arrest warrant, which... We've been following along this entire video. We got Nina Tamar Morano, a.k.a. Nina Tamar Oliver, slash Nina Beltran, Charles Beltran. All the weird names going back and forth. And Oliver is a known alias of Nina, okay? And this address, Davenport, is the company, which we've already tied both of them to, Lisa and Nina. And over here in the arrest warrant, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because we did this on the live stream, but it's believed that the suspect Charles Beltran LMs, I wonder what they exactly they took out here, suspect Lisa Dykes, a.k.a. Lisa Beltran or Lisa Ahmed, uh, and suspect Nina Morano, a.k.a. Nina Beltran or Nina T. Oliver, on or about the date of October 5th, committed the offense following the location 3113 Kensington Drive. An analysis of the complaints and suspects' cell phone records show that all parties were together at Dykes and Beltran's residence. And that's what, I'm, what I've heard and what I've seen, I guess. It seems like Lisa and Charles lived in that 3113 address. How do they tie together? I still don't know. Charles. It seemed maybe they're family. Maybe these are family members into some weirdo stuff. Okay. In Mesquite, Texas, on the last day of the complaint, the complainant was known to be alive. Phone records pertaining to the suspect Dykes and Morano show that on the night of the October 5th, 2020, both devices had traveled to an area south of Dallas near Hutchins, Texas. The area is densely wooded and close to several bodies of water. Uh, really quickly, pertaining to the suspect, Dykes and Morano. So I don't know what Charles was doing. Did he stay back while these two women, elderly women, went and did this situation? They traveled to South Dallas to a, a, a densely wooded area to a concrete plant. After traveling to Hutchins, Texas, both Dykes and Morano traveled back to Dykes residence located in Mesquite, Texas. A search of Beltran's and Dyke's residence revealed that the carpet had been cleaned, but streaks of brown and red color, the appearance of blood, 
were underneath the carpet. So it must have been a lot of blood. Went through the went through the carpet and all that stuff. Was did Charles stay back and clean up while these two other women went to go do this? What they did. The item seized were submitted to the Dallas County Forensics to check DNA to confirm for human blood. On December 31st, 2020, a black 2014 Audi was previously registered to suspect Dykes and Beltran. What's going on with Lisa and Charles? And known to have been driven by Beltran at the time of the vehicle. And known to have been driven by Beltran at the time of the offense was searched by NYSP investigators after it was discovered that the vehicle had been transported to New York. A hair sample was found in the trunk of the vehicle. The hair sample seems to match that of the complainant and not of Morano or Dykes. The hair sample is currently being analyzed during the search of the 2014 black Audi that was conducted by NYSP. Concrete material in the rear wheel well of the vehicle appeared to match the same type slash color of concrete that was used at the concrete plant where suspects Dykes and Morano showed to have traveled on the date slash night of the offense. DNA collected from one of the carpets and pads from what was believed to be Beltran's bedroom, Charles's bedroom. The blood found was a match to complaint Maricela, her blood. Unknown male and female DNA profiles were found in the carpet by SF whatever. This unknown DNA is believed to belong to Charles and Lisa or Nina, either or. Male and female. Initial results. Detectives have attempted to contact them throughout the course of the investigation. The suspects have shown a pattern of avoidance and attempted concealment of evidence pertaining to the investigation. Phone records show that the complainant and suspects Beltran, Dykes, and Morano were together at the suspect's residence on the date of the disappearance. Affin believes the complainant was injured based on the blood found at the residence. There are no records to show that the complainant was treated by any medical facility that, or that there was any ambulance dispatched to the address. After complainant's disappearance, all the suspects have left their jobs and moved out of their individual homes in Texas and Pennsylvania. The complainant has not been seen or heard of since. To me, what happened to Maricela? These people seem to be experienced. It seems like they're financially well off, connected. One's a lawyer. This other one has some other business stuff. And the people they're connected to seem to be well off. I still don't know how Charles ties into all of this. This 3113 address. This is by the Missing Persons Network. They were already on top of this January 3rd. That's the house right there. Same house that he used in his music video. 5050 Chuck, picture this. 3113. The names and aliases seem to be coming from family, like the Oliver, Ahmed, Williams, Keith. But there's just a uh, an aspect of... Um, just shadiness to the entire thing. There's something dirty about this whole situation. And I'm going to leave it at that because I'll let the web sleuth. Maybe they can dig deeper. I think I did all I can do for today. Two people are caught. Charles is left. And I'm almost inclined to think that these people had help. I don't think it was just these three. They had to be staying somewhere. They had to be staying places. I'm thinking these people had help. And Charles now is pretty quiet on his social media. This whole thing to me, it just stinks. The entire thing. And I think they've done this multiple times. This seemed to me, from, what I'm, from outside looking in, from what I know, this seems like policy and procedure to them. Something goes wrong, or they do something or whatever in that household. Okay, well, let's just go do this and do that and go to the concrete and do this. Boom. And we're done. Move out of the houses, whatever. And it was nothing for them to leave their own homes and disappear. So thank you guys for all the support. Take care of yourself. Comment down below. Please, YouTube being funny with me. All I ask is please hit like, turn on the bell with notifications, subscribe. Um, yeah, take care of yourselves. Peace. Bye.
Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.